Hey, Scott. Psyched for another Emmy-eligible episode of Comedy Bang Bang? <sighs> yeah, whatever. Everything okay? You seem even more depressed than usual. I don't know, Al. I, I mean, this show is great. The crew treats me like a king. I'm paid millions of dollars, and let's face it, it's very easy. But sometimes I feel like I'm missing what's truly important. Your family. What? No. There's a doorbuster sale at Superior Purchase. I could be there right now getting my copy of Cinema History. The second best exotic Marigold Hotel on Blu-ray. Yes. Such are the sacrifices of a TV personality. Yeah. You can't be in two places at once. I beg to differ. Hi, Dr. Dean Nancy A. from the Human Genome Project Celebrity Wing. Scott, you've heard of Bono, The Edge, Adam Clayton, and Larry Mullen Jr., right? So why not two yous? Our technology can create an instant human facsimile for busy people like yourselves. In my opinion, technology has gone too far. You see they're even making electric guitars now. Well, you know what? I saw the first third of a Dino Park movie about this kind of thing. It was neat stuff. I'm in, Doc! Looking good, yeah? What's with the hair and the accent? Well, that's the final challenge in human cloning. We've successfully mimicked nearly every gene except for hair, clothing, and accent. Whoa, is that SBMEH on Blu-ray, yeah? Well, at least he's got great taste. Well, I'll let you two get to it. I have to study for my GED. Ugh. Call me if you need anything. OK, handsome, here you go. Tell you what, while we're at it, buy one for yourself, all right? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Oi, need anything else, mate? I suppose a peek below the belt just to check for accuracy wouldn't hurt. <laughs> All righty. What do you got there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks familiar. It's Comedy Bang Bang. Tonight's guests, T-Pain, alien abductee Melvin Alberts, and Real Food. Featuring me, Weird Al Yankovic, and your host, Scott Ackerman. Hey there, welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. We have a great show tonight. T-Pain is here, as well as alien abductee Melvin Alberts. I'm Scott Ackerman. And you know, I want to start tonight's episode by just giving a shout out to all my fans out there. Hey, Fox, Window, Oscillator, you guys are great. Thanks for spinning wind to me, you blowy buddies. <laughs> Hey, speaking of buddies, let's say hello to our good buddy, Weird Al Yankovic. Nice! Thank you. So, how's everything going today? It's terrible! Keep. Why? What happened? You know, I, I've been looking for a great acupuncturist because I've got these back problems, and all my friends were raving about this guy out in the desert. So I, I drive all the way out to the desert, and uh, I, I get the treatment. I thought it was pretty great. And then I turned around to shake the acupuncturist's hand, and turns out it was a cactus. A uh, cactus? There's so many holes in that story. <laughs> well, imagine how my back feels. A touche. <laughs> so how about you, Scott? How's your day going? Having a clone is so great. I have so much more free time. Uh, Mr. Ackerman, you gotta sign these posters for the charity auction. Oh, I hate signing things. Can't you do it for me? Mr. Ackerman, you know I can't write in cursive. Also, you wanted me to remind you to do your laundry. I don't have time to do either of those things. Wait, I know what I'll do. <laughs> Oopsie, it's Shunigan Z. Sorry, friend. Ooh, sharp outfit. Okay, clone, you sign these posters. Other clone, you do this laundry. Are you sure more clones are a good idea? There's so much that could go wrong. We're just gonna have to agree to disagree because I cannot think of a single thing that could possibly go wrong. All right, let's get to our first guest. From the Sunshine State to the Fun Time Place. By the way, I started calling this studio the Fun Time Place. Please welcome T-Pain. There's a fine, fine line. Beautiful. Very that nice, Al. Great. Thank you. What were you saying? There's a fine line between tea pleasure and tea pain. Makes I've never sense. really thought about that. That's absolutely true. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Do I call you tea pain or pain? Um, or... Teddy. Teddy. Teddy Graham. Teddy Graham. Teddy Ham. Teddy Ham. There's the sweet and savory. Fantastic. Where did you get all these marvelous nicknames? Different sexual acts. It's 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 hmm. a it's a plethora of things. Could you that... do the Teddy Ham for me while I have you here? And it's an off-camera thing. It's an off-camera thing. Can we turn off the cameras for a while? Yeah, let's turn off the cameras. Let's do that. Oh, God, that was disgusting. Yeah. Now, as someone who wears glasses, mm -hmm. is the best part about them being able to take them off and rub the bridge of your nose anytime anyone says something stupid? The greatest thing of all time. Yeah. There's, there's this way, there's, there's that. Yeah, that's great. But here's the cool way to do it. Oh, nice. See what I did? Nice. Take this. <laughs> oh, oh, very good. Yeah. 
convenient. Now, Payne, what would you rather have as a pet, a cat or me? So, you know, what else have you been up to lately? Well, I gotta admit, Scott, there's a real reason I'm here. Oh, great. I've been hunting down the man who left me for dead, and I've tracked him down to this very studio. Wait, 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 someone who left you for dead works here? Who is it? Weird Al Yankovic. Look, T-Pain, I can explain. No, 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 the time for explanation is through. The time for vengeance is not. Scott, man, you gotta help me. Uh, okay, Al, look, T-Pain, T-Pain, calm down, man. I mean, uh, just tell me what happened. It was at the Grammys. Uh-huh. I saw Al, I went up to him, I introduced myself, we had a great conversation. It really made my night. Then he just said goodbye and he left. He never contacted me to see if I was alive. As far as you know, I could have died that very night. Were you in any danger when he left you? No. Well, T-Pain, I don't think it's very realistic to expect someone to check in on you every single day to make sure you're still alive, especially someone that you just met. Scott, you don't have to stick up for me. Like, T-Pain, I am so sorry. I, I should have called you every day to make sure you're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's in a lot. <laughs> Apology accepted. Oh, thank goodness. So, 50 chart topping singles. Yes. Have yes. you ever been listening to a song and been like, am I on this one? I have. There have been uh, many random times where I would find myself in the background of many songs. You know, just walking past the studio, I'd probably be singing and just end up on a song somewhere and it'll shoot right up to the top. Wow. Hey, do you mind singing just a little bit right here so maybe our show could get higher ratings? Bleep, bloop, blap. Wow. Beep, boop. Bum, bum. Number one show. Thank you. Wow. Bleep, bloop, blap. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. It's really that easy. So, T-Pain, do you endorse any kind of products like other hip-hop stars do? Oh, of course, yeah. I have my own brand of headphones. Oh. I shot a commercial for them and everything, but the ad never aired. Really? Why not? You know, I'm not really sure. We can take a look at it and see if we can figure it out. Oh, yeah. Roll it. Oh, hi. Right. Didn't hear you come in. When I'm recording in the studio, nothing is more important than high-quality headphones. That's why I never use T-Pain Sound Loud headphones. They're the worst brand, probably, of all time. They're super expensive, barely work. They're also too small. They, they just hurt your head when you, put it, when you put them on. It's pretty bad. Save your money. Buy just any, literally anything else with your money. Don't buy these. They're terrible. Yeah, see, I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. Well, you do tell people not to use the product you're endorsing. Well, there's that. But, you know, also, also, it could be because I blink too many times. So, T-Pain, when you're in the studio, do you ever think to yourself just like, okay, how am I going to lay down this beat? You know, is oh, it going to be fast? Is it going to be slow? Nah. Is it gonna... What's that? Totally forgot I was supposed to be tucking my kids in bed right now. I got to go, man. I'm sorry. Oh. Too bad, too. I was about to get into some, some real raunchy Hollywood sex stories, bro. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, if, if you don't want to go, I mean, you could always use that. Oh, man. Is that a clone machine? This is great. <laughs> That is wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's close enough. Go talk to my kids, man. Just... Yeah, sure, absolutely. <laughs> oh, Still, I guess you could say that that clone was pretty fly, huh? <laughs> you no. Could... no. No? No. Yeah, I don't need to say it. All right, we'll be right back. Can I have your chain? You go. Worried about the dangers of human cloning? Don't be. Here's how it works. Human cloning is a painless and simple process. First, scanners collect your genetic information. Then, your genetic blueprint is sent interdimensionally to a wizard in the Forbidden Realm. Using an ample gram crystal, he creates an exact replica of you, except for your hair, clothing, and accent, and teleports the replicant back to our second cloning chamber. And that's it. Simple, right? Our cloning technology will have you saying, I think I'm a clone now. Hey, that's my line. So basically, like, my underwear just end up useless. Imagine, hey, welcome back. We're here with T-Pain, and I have to say, I'm really enjoying having my clones do all my work for me. Hey, Mies. Bitte. Hello, me. That said, I am still pretty exhausted from having to sit in this comfy chair talking to interesting people all night. Hey. What? I said interesting people. Yeah, I know what you said. Anyway, I could use a break. All right, clone, go introduce the video. If anyone else needs me, I'll be catching some Z's in the bathroom. <laughs> You're gonna sleep in the bathroom? Yeah, bye. <sighs> All right.
right, well, since I'm in this situation and I have no choice, we may as well watch something. Oh, I, I have a new food show. We could watch that. All right, roll it. Plate, the hottest new restaurant in LA. With its molecular gastronomy-based menu, this Michelin-rated eatery is at the avant-garde of the culinary world. Especially with many tapas dishes like this, the portobello mushroom croquettes. Chef Rene utilizes delicate ingredients and expert preparation, making this plate truly a work of art. But hey, how about we get some real food? Now we're talking. A T-bone steak from Walt's Diner in Houston, cooked medium rare and slathered in steak sauce. And don't forget a generous helping of sides. <laughs> it just don't get better than this. But come on, let's get some real food. Yep, you can keep the waiters and menus and professional cooks because nothing beats the comforts of home and a traditional peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Unless of course you want some real food. This, this is it. A simple squash grown in a home garden, just the way mother nature intended. Now this is, without a doubt, food as real as it gets. But hey, let's get some real food! A ketchup packet smashed with the butt of a gun? Spaghetti noodles attached to a car battery. An egg cracked on a sofa cushion. An Arizona State sweatshirt with salt sprinkled on it. A tooth in a thimble. A Weebo drizzled with beer. An episode of Taxi Flight next to a plate of hair. A full slice blue with a glass of water inside. But come on, can we please get some real food? <sighs> and it all comes back here. Plate Restaurant and the Portobello Mushroom Croquettes. Truly the realest of foods. Chef Rene, if you please. No! You cannot have the croquettes again! What? Because you sat here, rejected my dish, and then left the restaurant without even paying! You have humiliated me! You shall never dine upon my croquettes again! <sighs> Chef Rene, I, I was wrong. You didn't deserve to be treated that way, and I'm sorry. You're an incredible artist, and after sampling the world's cuisine, I, I came to realize your croquettes are more than just a delicious dish. They're a masterpiece that reflects your very soul. And there is nothing more real than that. Another plate of croquettes, Mr. Yankovic. But let's get some real food! We'll be right back. Are you a clone? I'm not. But I figured out that shoes are like, Hard socks. Doesn't make sense. Hey, welcome back. We're here with T-Pain. It's time to get to our next guest. He's an alien abductee. Please welcome Melvin Alberts. Boom. Hi, Melvin. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Very nice Blue. to meet you. This is T-Pain. Hi, T-Pain. Hi, have a seat. Boom. All right. Yeah. Melvin. How are you? So nice to meet you. You're an alien abductee. I'm fascinated with stories about aliens coming down and kidnapping people. What happened to you? I was uh, driving down uh, Interstate 321 near my home. In, sure. Where's in that? Rock Hill, South Carolina. Okay. I was stopped at a train track, and, and then uh, I just, the, the, the it's, I felt like it maybe was an earthquake. It was such, you know, fear shaking. Wow. The car actually was filled with light, and it was lifted off the ground, and the next thing I knew, I was in an alien spaceship. You were in a spaceship. That's yeah. amazing. What was the, uh, you know, the probe situation was that was that a you know everybody asks about the probe situation it really is it's like, the most common question it is and it's a humiliating abductees. thing you that, know? that actually happens it does it really wow. does it's almost like they get some kind of perverse joy from it they, oh. they strap you to a chair and these creatures come out i mean they're they're aliens they're not oh, creatures okay. and they, you know it's the same thing they look like light bulbs wow little mouths Skinny big eyes the bottom. little butts you know little butts. but they do strap you down and they probe you and uh they put a probe in my ear, my mouth, oh. and then they're like, oh, "Those are like, the worst places I've ever heard." Yeah. yeah, I was like, "This is cool. Like, when do I leave?" Sure. And they're like, "Well, we have to do the anus next." Oh, so they they save it for last. They, they save it for last. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they prepared okay. you for it at least, but not really. I mean, just by probing your ear, and then they're like, "Next one's the anus." You're like, "Wait a minute, you know?" That's not Biden's yet. dinner. <laughs> this went on for about four hours. And okay. Then, oh. And like, then they delivered you back to Earth. Well, or? no. Then I said, "Hey, you guys, sure you got all the information you want?" And. uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you go ahead if you want. And so they went at it again, okay. uh, entered me with the probe. Okay, uh, all right. By then, I kind of like, okay, I know what's going on here. Okay, sure. You know, so they, yeah. they were like, cool. And they just, that's when they took you back to Earth? or No, no. Then I got to their planet and... They took you to their alien planet? Yeah. Wow. Cypersex-1. Cypersex-1. In Cypersex-1, 
there's a human zoo. Whoa. Wow. Where humans are captive and they're on display for other aliens? You know, we were in different cages. When I got taken in, I, right away I knew I had this, this survival instinct that I had to kind of like befriend them. Mm. And soon they actually made me a guard at the zoo. You were guarding the other humans? Uh -huh. Yeah, there were a couple uprisings at the zoo. They were trying to escape, and I, I, I stopped it, you know? How did you stop it? They them? have this thing that looks like um, a Tic Tac, and you put it between your fingers, and go, Pew! and it just kills you. It just <laughs> goes right through you, just burns a hole like the size of a softball. You killed, wow. how many humans have you kill, killed? I killed about 15 humans while guarding this uh, human, human zoo. Why didn't you use these weapons and turn them upon your slavers? I had Helsinki. Uh, Central. Stock, Stockholm Stockholm Syndrome. 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 Yeah. I had stock, Stockholm Syndrome, I think. Okay. And I was in a relationship with an alien. Okay. Where we just sit together and stare in each other's eyes, and then we put flashlights in our butts. Uh, okay. It's been a lot, a lot of, a lot of butt stuff. Yeah. We don't know how great the butthole is. All right. We'll be right back with more comedy bang bang after this. They, they talk like this. Hey, how are you? We're aliens. Blew up the Titanic. You're grossly misinformed. Hey, welcome back. Well, that's our show, and I can finally end an episode the way I've always wanted to, with a special musical performance from the freshest, most talented musicians on earth. Uh, I'm flattered, Scott, but I told you I, I won't perform on a cable show. No, not you, Al. Me! I give you the Ockerpellas! Let me call you Scotty, dear. Whisper your Ackerman do. Our clones? Yeah. Who hasn't dreamed of having a barbershop quartet made up of people who look exactly like them, singing songs with their name, replacing the actual lyrics? My sweet Scott, eyes of Ackerman blue, Ackerman blue. Keep it down out there! Hey, quiet down out there! Can you guys keep it down, please? Who are you? I'm the original Scott Ackerman. I cloned myself during season one so I could just play video games and record podcasts all day. You're looking good, Reg. You do something with your hair? I'm Weird Al Yankovic. All right, well, try to keep it down, Alf. Dr. Scotty Scott, 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 sweet Ackerman. <gasps> Oi, I got it. The wolf dead. Absolutely.